I'm sure you recognise that. Uh, we're at Sea Freight. It's a warm, dry, breezy day. Forecast says it's clearing tonight. So um, we're going to go up and do a wild camp. The last few wild camps I've done, the weather forecast has been different on all the different websites, and um, occasionally it's not been the best. Uh, although I've had a couple of good ones. But tonight, all of them say it's going to clear tonight. So uh, we're going to get up to Styhead, and then we're not going to Sprinkling Tarn or Styhead Tarn. We're going somewhere else. It's the longest day of the year. So we should get a lovely evening. I'm not particularly early, but we've got plenty of time. Hello, mate. With the forecast to be clear, I'm quite excited for tonight. I've got quite minimal gear, I've not got a lot with me today. Uh, shouldn't get much in the way of midges because it's quite a, it's quite a breeze. But today I have got something a little bit different planned and you'll see that later. Quick drink stop, having a little bit of this and some water. I'm quite light on food today because I'm not going too far. Um, and I'm already, already getting the munchies, which is not a good sign. So this is the view down over Seafway to Bowerdale. The skyline is Blen at the top there. It's a lovely day. There's actually, there's a few people coming down, but it's not quite as busy as I thought it'd be. But then it's um, mid-June, mid-week, so, so I suppose it's only the lucky few that are on holiday at the moment. I'm between shifts. It's just out of the cloud, there's a top of scaffold pipe, you can maybe see it just to the left of that bit of cloud that's coming over. We're not going quite as high as that, so even if the cloud sticks around, um, we're not going to be in a cloud. I'm still confident it's going to clear tonight. Oh, it's a lovely day, there's a nice breeze. So, Stoyed Tarns just round here, let's go and have a look. Oh, well, here we are at the Tarn, Stoyed Tarn. Uh, it's not that late. Uh, there's no tents here yet. I can see two people walking up there with bigger packs. They're probably going to sprinkling. I'm going up there. Start the corridor route and kick up left. Yes, yeah, so there's two people, definitely wild camps in front of me. Be interesting to see where they're going. Let's hope they turn up to Great, great Gable because I think I've gone past the junction for the sprinkling tarn. We'll see. Anyway, let's get a bit further. Look at that view. Look at these beautiful cows. Hello, mate. Reminds me of my dog, Ralph. I don't know why. Hello, mate. Hello. Ooh. These are funny ones, grey and black. Uh, and I did have it in my mind still to go to Cascali on Great Enders. I scramble just to add something to the trip. But uh, 
even if I, I decided, even if I had time, I'm not going to do that because it needs to be done in the winter. I haven't been to Great End in the winter to do a gully for, that's got to be 15 to 20 years. Central Gully, Cuss Gully, they're just epic winter routes. I've done so much in the winter around Helvellyn and other middle areas um, over the last years and then obviously the winter's been a bit hit and miss. So I'm going to save Cuss Gully for a winter day, not necessarily, well almost definitely not a wild camp because uh, I've got to carry a lot for a wild camp in the winter and I don't really fancy climbing up a gully, even if it's a short one with all the winter gear and the winter climbing gear. That would be a bit much. I'll pass the other two uh, wild campers. They're going to a similar place, but a bit further around. I'm, uh, I'm actually kind of regretting not going up past Sprinkling Tarn and over Great End first just because it's going to be a nice evening but I'd like to get to the, the camp and just have a nice long chill this time so uh, we'll stick to the plan lovely it's down into Wasdale Stayed Pass Great Gable and the uh, the ridge sticking out at the left of Great Gable that's what I camped on on my Great Gable Traverse film it's a lovely film I highly recommend it <laughs> good fun on that actually right from an un undisclosed location on uh, the uh, corridor route I'm gonna head up um, and uh, see if we can find this this water don't think it's going to be quite as straightforward as I thought I'm not following GPS I don't want to find it with GPS I've looked at the terrain so I'm taking potluck. up see how well I do but good visibility I'll just get up there if I can't see it I'll get a bit higher and look for it I've seen it from the top of uh, well when I went up onto uh, Ill Crag and Great End so know where it is but from, from down here it's um, a little less obvious so uh, let's, let's go and see doing some nice little scrambles somewhere just above the corridor route so I decided I was bored of the path and I uh, want to gain some height and then traverse across it's getting really hot, the wind's dropped. But I am really happy. Because not only is the view like that, I've come so close and I've got land foot dub. Ooh. And you've got two guesses where my tent's going. Just there. Awesome, oh my goodness. Look at this amphitheatre, back at Great End, Eel Crag and Broad Crag, Scalpel Pike, Lingmore. Wow, I saw this first on Dave Solo, Solo Summer Tears um, channel and uh, I thought that looks lovely there. I thought it was going to be easier to get to, it's, it's quite a little slog up from the corridor but actually still a lot shorter than if you was going on the tops, but it's beautiful, beautiful. Here's the, here's the tent. This is a 25 year old North Face, I think it's called a West Wind 2. Um, I just thought I'd bring it up and use it. I did miscalculate how many pegs it needed. I bought my other peg bag and uh, 
so some of me guys have got rocks on but there's hardly any wind tonight um, if there is I'll get bigger rocks but uh, most of it's all guyed out properly but look this is it's like a tunnel tent more than a geo it's a tunnel tent type thing three hoops it's got a rear door not that you can get out of it I don't really understand but it gives good ventilation inside um, it's really good in the wind as well uh, it's got a lot of room it's not um, it's not massive but it's very wide so there's plenty of room next to me for for gear and there's quite a big vestibule for gear it's not good enough to cook in and that really um, so small but fine for one man and his gear but well yeah this is a lovely place let's have a quick look round I'm going to just tidy my gear up and then I'll take you out onto the hill for the view Scaffold Pike's looking good. Be lovely up there this evening. It's a little bit hazy, but you can see for miles. There's Lingmall over there with a the shadow. I can hear the gill. Plenty of water running down there. Um, uh, if I get up early enough in the morning, I was thinking this is going to be such a good camp, I'll just go down. But if I'm up and about, I might go up into the gap there between um, Ill Crag and Great End and go down the other side, S Calls, and down uh, to Seafway that way. But we'll see. Corridor route goes through there up to the coal between Lingmall and Scaffold Pike and then turns around and goes up to the top. <laughs> Not been in here before. I went across there and looked down when I did the uh, Eel Crag Wild Camp in the winter. It looked lovely and you could see you could see the town from up there. Um, oh, it's beautiful this thing. What a, this lamb foot dub. I didn't know lamb, it's more like lamb shank dub, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I'm going to get in it. Um, it's, it's deep enough to sort of get in, but we'll see. See what it's like. I suppose really I should have a quick drone flight while the wind's down. I'm useless at getting in water. My feet don't like things, and uh, it's not too cold. I can't stand on the bottom because that the black stuff on the bottom is all just like three foot yuck. So I've got. <laughs> I've got a lunge. I've got a lunge in. So I can just float. Oh, that's refreshing. That's refreshing.
I am what I can only describe as starving. Um, so, so I'm going to um, get some grub on. What a place! What a place! What a place! Amazing. Have I said that already? Today, we have the delights of summit to eat chicken tickle with rice. I suppose really, I should tidy this up. <laughs> I've got a bit of a hankering to go and do a scramble up there when I've done my dinner. We'll see. But as soon as I've eaten, I'll do the little drone drone flight, show you where we are. Got me red wine again. This time it is a Merlot and not a Malbec. Let's have a taste. Oh, lovely. 25 years old, this tent. I've um, seam sealed it a couple of years ago. Can't remember what I paid for it. But at the time, it was one of the, one of the better ones. So, we'll take the top off of this. Oh, that smells good. Right, that's, that's all the bits off the bottom. Seal it up and I'm going to bung the bag back in the hot water. Just so it's extra warm. Can't get, I can't get over that. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. And the light on uh, Great Gable, it always has some really interesting shadows on it because of all the, uh, the ridges on the front there. Um, yeah, my film. Check it out. I, I camped on the. Uh, I camped on the ridge. Um, that was a lovely evening. Went along the climbers traverse. Did a bit of scrambling up. Um, I didn't go. I didn't thread the needle, but I did go past the needle, along to Sphinx Rock, and then I climbed the ridge. Um, the Sphinx Ridge. Scrambled that and camp just above it. Oh blimey, it looks like it's a long way down to this water here. When they're dry, they sometimes take a little while, these filters, but I uh, set, top that up. That's a bottle full. Put that on there. Lovely. So that's another, yeah, that's it. A litre, that'll do for now. It's enough, enough for me coffee and a sip during the night. I think I've got, I've got some Lucozade left as well, but I'm going to save that for the way down. Here we are again. Look at that. I'm going to tie with that. Decant that into there later. Let's see how this is doing. A bit runny and it's also still a little bit chewy. So I'm going to seal the bag. I'm going to 
warm up the water and let it soak a bit longer. Don't try this at home. This amphitheatre is just gorgeous. It's just so much to look at. It's spin you around. <laughs> look at those crags. It's just... I can't think of any scrambles in the books that I've got that are on this side. This um there's one on Pen up Hill Crag and uh can't remember the name of the scramble, but there's this one on the other side there. But these look like there'd be some good scrambling. That one up there, the the uh the diagonal up left, that looks easy enough from here. Mind you, you can even tell. Sometimes they look easy until you get on them or whatever. But uh, yeah, I bet there is some scrambles here. Those ones over there look a bit like broad stand. They're sloping the wrong way. They don't look good. I love the fact that it's whatever time in the evening, and it's still I can still feel the warmth of the sun. Yeah. Wow. Cheers. I was watching um, Black Craig and he was saying, he did a wild, his recent wild camp and he was saying how good it is just to be out here and it's good for your mental health. Everyone, you know, everyone knows that the outdoors, scientifically, somehow, for whatever reason, is good for your mental health. But um, it is. And although I'm, I'm not an antisocial person, I love being with my mates and like Hamish, Nathan, the people, all the, loads of people I've been up um, hills with for years, love going with them and would normally choose that. But when I'm on my own, there is something special about particularly a wild camp on your own. There's a lot of people on Facebook that are worried about it, but don't be. Because you just can soak it up, go at your own pace, listen to the nothing and um, yeah, I mean, you get a day like this, what else would you want to be doing? If I was really energetic and had lots of food, I'd scoot up to Scalpel Pike this evening, but um, I haven't got a lot of food and if I'm gonna run around, I really need a bit more. I've had a couple of bananas and some chocolate. I'm just about to have this. Maybe that's all right. The thing is, it's such a nice evening. Seems a shame to not do something. <laughs> but I like the idea of this. Right. If this ain't done now, it's never going to be done. It's still a bit right, a bit sloppy. But well, that's probably my fault. As long as there's no chewy bits.
Yeah, if I had a bit of energy, I'd go up there. But uh, I don't know, I don't think I can be bothered today. It's just nice here. I was saying, uh, if you haven't done Scaffold Pike, or if you haven't done Scaffold Pike via the corridor route, it's a good route. It's a bit longer from Seathwaite, but it's a gentle, it's much more gentle. And it's a very interesting route through here, over the different gills, um, up there, and up there. It's, it's just a yeah, much more interesting route. And the good thing is, once you get to the top, you can either go back the same way, or you can just go over the top, which is relatively flat. There's a little dip between um, Scaffold Pike and um, Broad Crag, but literally five or ten minutes. And then across, and then down towards S Calls, and then down to Seathwaite, the other side of the Great End. So it's a lovely circuit, uh, rather than coming up from Wasdale, just up the steps and, all right, you get to the top and you see the views, if, if you're lucky. <laughs> But um, as far as routes go, the circuit include using the uh, corridor route is uh, way, way better. Yeah, so we've got, oh, I can't remember the name, is it you, Barra? Oh. Kirk Fell next to um, Great Gable. Great Gable, Green Gable, over the back Skidor in the, on the skyline and Glen Caffra. And just about to see Dale Wentwater over there. Yeah. yeah. It's not cold. I've only got this on um, just because it's these these thin uh, down jackets. I mean, if you haven't got one, they're so versatile. They just keep the chill off if you if it's just cooling down a little bit. But also, they do pretty good job if it's actually cold. Especially if you put on a, a wind cheater or waterproof over the top, then they're a really good thermal. Um, thermal layer for like proper cold not really deep winter sitting around I use I've got a sim on um, it's sort of similar to the sort of eight or nine hundred fill down jacket but it's a lot cheaper than the rab I, I'd love a rab but I saw the sim one I thought I'll give it a go and it's bonkers brilliant it's really good I've used it on winter camps been 100% warm and it's nice and long so uh, you can see that on me Eel Crag or me um, Black Sails Wild Camp maybe, but uh, I'm not I'm not a gear person, but it's worth mentioning things occasionally if anyone's looking looking for gear. That's why I've only bought it out when I know it's going to be quite good weather. But it's a nice tent, nice tent. Most of them hoop tents, they're really good in the wind. If you stake them out well, they're, they're, it's a good design. Um, <laughs> going to go and sit down. Oh my goodness. <sighs> oh. Yes, Papa. Hmm. Awesome. Because I don't think it's going to be all that glorious in the morning uh, at this actual location because the sun will be the other side of the hill. But we'll see. So I'll catch you then. I'm going to get my head down. Good night. Ugh. Quite a comfortable night, but um, there are some funny old noises. I got out of the tent about two o'clock because there was shh, 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 shh. I thought, what on earth? I don't know what that was. Uh, but all night, two o'clock. Three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, and now helicopter. I don't know if someone's missing or what. 
No, I hope not. I hope nothing's too, too drastic. Could be training, but... Um... Anyone knows where they sell them small tubes of uh, carnation evaporated milk? It's the best way of transporting milk around if you don't mind it sweet. You should do them in a little tube like toothpaste or hand cream tube but just carnation milk but um, I can't find them. So I'll have my coffee black but I'd probably prefer a little bit of that in it. I know I could bring a little uh, little plastic container you know, the little UHT milks but I don't really like it and it had only burst. <sighs> Pretty clear. There's some sort of cloud over there but uh, it's clear it's quite still there's virtually no wind this morning Yeah, just heading straight back down there. Let's get the bag on. Last look at the campsite. A worthy trip, awesome camp. Well, there you have it. Leave no trace. Absolutely astounded the um, the tent was bone dry, I mean about 2 o'clock, or it might be 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, it was quite foggy here. Um, but even the bottom of the ground sheet wasn't very damp. So, um, yeah, all packed up. Oh, that's lovely and light.
Great gables always a good one to look at, isn't it? Um, there's some poking through. Oh, look! It's lighting up the valley here. So now we're going to trundle down the bottom half of the corridor route back to Styed Town, and why not? down so I shall see you on the next adventure. Drop some comments, like and subscribe and all that jazz but uh, see you out there and uh, hope you enjoyed the film. Awesome place. a heron being chased by a seagull. Making a right old noisy old heron. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Anyhow, that's got to be it. Don't understand. In the urinal, in the secret farm toilets, someone's tipped their pistachio shells. In the urinal. Were they at the urinal eating pistachios? I don't understand. I don't understand.